How annoying is it when people just give you one word answers in social situations? That's the topic of today's discussion. Anthony Samra from BeYourselfAndLoveIt.com. This question came from a regular listener. Ruby got in touch with me to ask about someone at her work that she has to see regularly that she really struggles to engage in conversation with. The person can be quite temperamental. Now, obviously in some social situations, you don't have to necessarily talk to someone that only gives you one word answers. You can maybe gauge that they're maybe not that interested in talking to you or you're not that interested in talking to them. But sometimes you might either, well, find that you wanna to practice to improve your social skills or that you're in a situation like Ruby at work where it becomes difficult not to have to be in the situation where you have to deal with that person. So it'd be nice to explore what our options might be and see if we can increase the quality of the choices we have in such social situations. And of course, any skills you learn from this video might prove useful in other situations. So a lot of the time when people are asked, how do you deal with one word answers? They say, they'll say something like, why don't you ask more open-ended questions? Closed questions are likely to just get a yes or no. So if you say, where are you from? France. Uh, oh, really? How long ago did you move here? Seven years ago. <laughs> the, someone who's going to be, it's easy for someone to just give short answers and they say, why don't you ask a question like, what are you passionate about? Or, uh, but I get the feeling that Ruby's probably tried that before. And in some situations that might not necessarily work. It might work, but then it might not. It's definitely wor worth looking up open-ended questions so that you have a few of them memorized and you can use them at your leisure. But I, I wanna maybe suggest some more other things that you can do other than just creating more open questions. And the reason for that is like, if you're out and you ask someone a really open question, like, so tell me something you're passionate about or, what's the craziest thing you've ever done? They might answer you, or they might go, um, oh, I don't know, it might be too open a question. You know, some, you can actually find a medium question that's something like, um, so would you rather travel in Asia, Europe, or Australia? That's kind of a medium, op it's open, but it's not like wide open. So um, another thing, a, te a technique that I wanna teach you is um, you can, answer the question before you ask it. So a lot of the time you can say, you can start with like, I don't know you, about you, but I really like Italian food because they cook with a lot of tomatoes and cheese and olive oil. And I'm, oh my God, I'm just fanatic for olive oil and I just love cheese. Right, uh, uh, how about you? What kind of food do you eat? By providing more, by providing more, you give that other person a prompt and they can either say what their kind of food is or they can say, well, I don't really like Italian food or, oh, what I like about Italian food is you're providing more material. You could start with, I would love to live in and say the country that you'd love to live in. One thing, or I might say, you know, one thing I can't live without is my Kindle. I love reading and I, I take a lot of public transport because that gives me my time to read. I don't mind at all. I, I like to get on the bus with my Kindle and read, but I never know what I'm going to read ahead of time. And uh, so that lets me, that saves me having to carry a hundred books, um, books in my bag. I'm just improvising. I could say, how about you? Is there one thing that you couldn't live without? I guess uh, there, there's lots of reasons why someone might um, not want to speak to you and you might need to, di or sorry, might make it hard for you to speak to them by giving mon monosyllabic answers. And so you might want to be aware of the context. What is it that's going on for this person? Are they shy? My last video, which you can obviously see on YouTube, there's a whole playlist on YouTube where you can get all of them. I was talking about pointing out the elephant in the room. And you could maybe say, I've noticed that you're not, it depends on the context, of course, but you can say, I've noticed that you're not that engaged in the conversation. Is something else going on? Are you bored? Um, are you not Are you not interested in this topic? Because I'm guessing that Ruby has tried to get the person that she needs to deal with and work to talk about her passions, but she's not been able to find out what those are. She said that some of her 
interests. Well, let's say, let's keep it general here. If you know some of that person's interests at all, you can, and you know you're going to have to deal with them, you can prepare. If you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. Anecdotes regarding those kinds of things. You should always have in mind the most interesting thing that happened to you this week, the funniest thing that happened to you this week. You should always write that down. You should always have that in mind if you're going out anywhere because that is a perfect thing to talk about always. What's, what, what happened that was funny? What happened that was interesting? A lot of the things that you think are boring are the perfect kind of material to get talking to some someone. So there you've got some options. You can ask a medium to open question. You can answer a question in a way that implies that the other person should then answer it. I definitely think that ha if you know you're going to be into going into a situation, you should have some anecdotes prepared. The third video in this series, I think, was called How to Tell What Story, if you want to get better at using anecdotes. And I'll probably be doing more videos than that uh, on telling anecdotes in the future. So. I guess this is a short one this week. If you want more, you can find the playlist on YouTube. And until next time, be yourself. But don't just be yourself. Be yourself and love it.